So this is the Atari 7800 that I won on eBay for £20. It is not in the greatest condition, it has some scuffs, it's missing a power button and it's also pretty dirty. Another thing that you'll notice is that the power jack is also wonky at the back of this system, so that will need to be fixed. So turning this system over, you'll see five screws and they are all the same size, all Phillips heads, and they're pretty simple and pretty easy to get out there. Turning the console back over, lifting the top lid then presents to you the large RF shield and the switches to the 7800. Now that I have access to the power switch, I'm now going to test and see whether it will turn on. And success. So now we know the system works, we now need to take the RF shield off. And to do that, we simply have to twist the metal tabs that are holding the top and the bottom RF shield together. And it will just simply come apart once we have basically all the tabs twisted in the right position. So as I suspected, it looks like one of the clips has broken off, it has. So, where is it? It's like hanging, <laughs> I'm afraid it has. Um, and it looks like also someone put like a solder blob there, it has, and hasn't used any kind of flux, it's just on top of it. That doesn't look factory to me, it doesn't. Um, and I'll show you instead why I think it's fa uh, why that's not factory, because if you look at what factory is, like this over here is, this, this is this old flux, and you can tell it's kind of factory that is. Um, if we go to the front of the board, as you can see, it's just old factory there, so it's all old factory flux, it says, which can all be cleaned off, and I mean, using some IPA and toothbrush, so, I mean, which is a good thing, so, as you can see at the moment, there is no signs of damage or anything, I know, uh, broken traces or things like that, it's all in very good condition. So this is the top side of the 7800 and as you can see there are lots of clips. So let's explore what powers the Sega 100 and how it's able to run 2600 games. So at the bottom left we have the CPU, the UM6502 named Sally. It's Atari's version of the 6502 CPU which was used on Atari's 8-bit computers. The 6502 CPU was also used, or variations of the CPU were used on many computers and consoles, namely a few, such as the Atari 2600, Apple II, NES and Commodore 64. Above it is the Maria chip. The Maria chip is a custom Atari chip and is the heart of the 7800. It handles all the graphics and video in 7800 mode. On the other side, we have the TIA clip, also known as the Television Interface Adapter Clip. It handles all the graphics for the 2600 games and audio for both 2600 and 7800 games. When a 2600 game is inserted, the TIA clip clocks down from 1.79 MHz to 1.19 MHz to match the specifications of the Atari 2600. It is also used for the 2600 controller inputs, such as the fire button and panel controllers. This is how backwards compatibility was achieved. Originally Atari had developed a new sound clip for the 7800 called Gumby, but this clip was omitted from the final design. The sound on the 7800 was one of the weak points on the console, as it used the sounds from the 2600 TIA clip However, Atari added an additional audio pin to the 7800 cartridge slot, so developers can add their own sound clips to the cartridges to combat this issue. However, only two 7800 games will ever use this feature, Ballblazer and Commando, and they used a clip called the Pokey sound clip. These are the RAM clips. The Atari 7800 has 2 times 2 kilobytes of RAM. In total, makes 4 kilobytes of RAM. This clip holds the operating system for the Atari 7800. It also holds the ROM 
for the game Asteroids, which were included in Power Region versions of the 7800 consoles. And the final clip is the 6532 clip, also known as the Riot clip. It is a peripheral interface adapter which handles all I.O., for example, the pause, select and reset buttons on the 7800 and joysticks you use on the 7800 console. It also has 128 bytes of static RAM and has a programmable interval timer for the 2600 mode. So as you can see, this Atari 7800 is in much need of a clean. The ground planes have got gunk over them, it's dusty, it's dirty, the board is. So IPA will be fantastic to really grab a lot of this old dirt by using basically anti-static brush, which I'm using here. And it basically just takes off all the dirt and as you can see it really really cleans it up really nicely it does I even do the underside of the board because the underside of the board was also particularly dirty as well and also has a lot of that old flux which I'm hoping the, the IPA will be able to get rid of the ports were cleaned and I also put the shells in the shower and get, gave them a really good clean especially the buttons as well. So once the shell was washed, I used an air dryer to dry it a bit quicker. I then got a kitchen towel to basically clean uh, and scrub away all the marks that were on the 7800 and it really worked perfectly. It got rid of the majority of the marks that were on there. So now onto the power port, I apply some flux and put some heat from my soldering iron on both joints and push the power jack up so then it clicks back in place. The power port is now back in its original position, but we still have a lot of soldering work still to do. These are the original capacitors and they are coming up to nearly 35 years old. So these will need to be replaced with new high quality capacitors. I replace each of the three capacitors on the board. Testing the 7800 after the recap on the TV displayed the built-in game Asteroids, declaring that the cleaning and recap process was a success. But now our attention turns to that missing power button. So as you can see that there is a missing button from this panel, which is one of the most crucial buttons to have, which is the power button. Now originally I was going to basically swap like the pause button and put it onto the power button, but I decided to go onto the Facebook Atari groups, you know what I mean, and um, see whether there was anyone that had pr uh, 3D printed these buttons um, and th whether they could send me the design. But a very, very nice, uh, a very, not very nice person named Kerry Richardson, I just want to uh, uh, give him a shout out, I do, uh, sent me a uh, spare power button from his NTSC uh, Atari 7800 all the way from America. Yeah, I just want to say thank you very much again. Um, really, really appreciate it. And yeah, where is it? Because uh, yeah, thank you so much. And now it's time to reassemble the 7800, starting with the buttons. So as you can see, the select button isn't flushed. The reason why is because the hinges have kind of broken, they have. So I put some hot glue on it and basically molded around where the original clip would have been. And now it looks absolutely fantastic and is working fantastic.
and that completes the restoration of the Atari 7800. Thank you so much everyone for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and until next time, bye for now.